First question, what made you choose to live in Brighton? Would you live in any other city in the UK? We kind of just wanted to find a place where we could both speak, be independent, without needing each other for every single thing. So obviously the choice was England. And I remember a friend of mine told me while I was in high school that she visited here and she loved it. So we decided to book a short holiday. We came here in November and I remember vlogging it. At that time, we just fell in love. We knew this was the place where we wanted to be. So from November where we visited, we waited until July. And that's when we officially moved here, the 1st of July. And from then, it's been three years since we moved here. I absolutely love this city. I think it's 100% me. There is so many like vintage and secondhand shops, so many creative places, beautiful architecture. And it's overall like more relaxed than a really, really big city. And it's by the seaside, which is something both Felix and I really wanted. And it's just so open-minded that I think this would be the perfect place for us to stay. I don't think we will move somewhere else because we love this city so much. So if it was in the UK, this is the place. If it was somewhere else, you know, we might move somewhere else in the future. But for now, this is home. Do you ever feel jealous from Felix? I mean, when you see his channel growing massively on a very large scale as compared to yours? Absolutely not. I think being jealous of someone is such a silly thing. If you see someone being successful, first you should be happy, but second, it should be an inspiration to you. And this may sound weird, but if you do have social anxiety like I do, you will understand this concept. When you put yourself out there, it's already hard enough. And the more people kind of come your way, the more you feel like you're the center of attention. So I would never want to be as big as Felix is because I wouldn't be able to handle it. He does it so well, I would not be. If more people find me and they just like me, that's great. And I appreciate all the participants that are here. So I'm happy for him and I'm happy for myself. What's the most effective way you deal with social anxiety? I don't know. I've always had it for such a long time. And in the beginning, I just thought I'm just shy, which I am. But when, you, when I started working on this field, I kind of realized that it was way more than that. So I remember a few years ago, when I moved to UK, I didn't know anyone. I didn't know how things worked around here. And my anxiety was awful. For the longest time, I wouldn't even leave the house. I wouldn't be able to go anywhere on my own. And I, I just, I, I didn't know how to function. So eventually I realized that that was so bad. I was so unhappy. And although I did make videos and that kind of helped for me to feel like I was still social, I felt like I needed to go out there. So I just started with very small things and you know, eventually I managed to get out of my bubble a little bit more every single time. And now I can totally just go places myself, like to the doctor, to the grocery store, to get my nails done, even silly things before were not simple for me. So I think what really helped me was first to push myself a little bit. And this could be as small of a step as you want or as big as you feel comfortable with. The key here is being comfortable because if you don't feel like it and you push too hard, that's gonna backlash and you're gonna feel like so bad because you weren't able to succeed or to face your fears. So it's about really knowing what you're comfortable with, knowing yourself, respecting yourself and your time. Don't be too harsh on yourself because that wouldn't be productive. But if you do try to push yourself a little bit and you succeed, most likely, even if you think it's impossible, if you just give it a go in smaller things, you will do it. After you're done with it, just be proud of yourself, celebrate, do something nice for yourself to show, you know, that you managed to do it on your own. And in the beginning, I couldn't do most things on my own, as I said, so what helped me was to kind of lean on some people. And I say some people, because if you only pick one, that will be too heavy on the person, you don't want to put that pressure on someone else. But if you do have like a friend and a partner and maybe your family, I don't know, you can just invite them over to do things with you and eventually you will feel like you're doing the right thing, you can do it on your own and it just gets easier. I couldn't go to the mall, but then Emma came around and we went together. And now if I need to run and get something, I can do it myself. But before, initially, she was there for me and she's still there if I need her. So just find people that you can trust and 
whenever things are a little harder for you, try to ask them for help without making it too much of a pressuring thing for them. Just, you know, make it go natural and I think eventually you will manage to expand what you're comfortable with, I think. Next question, what books are you reading right now? Any recommendations? And oh, good luck in studying interior design, stay safe. Because I'm studying interior design, I have been struggling to find time to read because there is so much to read, both on the chapters, both on books that I have to read. But the one book that I picked up a few days ago is called Chia Chan and Me. I think it's translated in English and it's by Banana Ishimoto, my favorite writer. I only read about 20 pages for now and as always, it kind of started slow and a little bit sad, but that's why I like it. And I feel like all of her books have some kind of mystery and really deep meanings going underneath the story. But try to read any of her books, they are quite short, so if you don't like it, it's not like you've wasted time. And when you read them, try to really focus on what she's trying to transmit rather than the story just itself because her stories, to be honest, are pretty simple most of the time. But I always relate to her characters and the way she writes is just so... Good. If you were to have another pet, what type would it be and what would you name him or her? So, guys, I did not tell you about this, but last year in November I was in San Francisco and I was at a restaurant with Felix. We were eating fries, french fries. All of a sudden he just was like, I'm gonna give up eating fries for a whole year. But if I don't, what do you want? And I was like, I want a french bulldog. He was like, okay, deal done. We went on. For many months, I was so afraid because he was not eating them, he was not touching them, he didn't seem like he was interested, until a few weeks ago, which I had on camera, he just ordered fries and I was like, what? And I was just so confused, so technically I want the bed and right now I'm waiting for my dog to come, he's not getting me one yet, it can either be a French Bulldog or a white pug, but if I had one, I would definitely call it mayo. Hashtag we want mayo. Thank you. What are your favorite holiday destinations? What places impress you the most and where would you like to go next? Ooh, I am so passionate about traveling. This is such a hard question. Okay, so definitely I think it may be able to tell. I love Japan. I visited Tokyo, Nara and Kyoto and I love all three of them. They are so different from each other. I wouldn't be able to pick one on top. Actually, Kitakamakura is also amazing. So Japan, number one on my list. I absolutely love it there and it's just so different and it makes me feel so good when I'm there and I'm so happy. Second place I absolutely love was uh, San Francisco in California. The architecture there is insanely beautiful. I think everything there is it's just magical. I just love it there. I think it's so pretty. It's probably the prettiest city I've ever been to, in my opinion. So San Francisco, big like as well. But then it's really hard. I really like Singapore because it was very different. There was that kind of uh, very modern side of it and then very traditional and I really enjoyed seeing that. Another specific place was the Dracula Castle in Romania which I visited when I was younger and I remember just loving it. In Italy, there are other places that I love, like Pisa or Lake Garda, they are such amazing places. And then Santorini is so stunning, it's in Greece, really beautiful, although I wouldn't suggest going there for too long, it's just really pretty to look at, but there isn't too, too much going on. And with someone like me, who can't really sit down and just sunbathe, I want activities to do, but very, very stunning. So. I don't know, I feel like I'm missing many places, but those are definitely the top ones. And a place where I would love to go is either Iceland, which I'm looking forward to go in the near future, hopefully, and Vietnam, which is a, a place I've been wanting to go to for so long. And Felix and I have talked about going there, but him going away for more than a week is not really doable. And I'm studying as well, and stuff like that so right now it wouldn't be able to happen because if I do go there I want to really visit it well so that's not possible right now but Vietnam I'm coming for you okay so this is the ending of the Q&A and this video as well I really hope you enjoyed it and I will see you next week bye thanks for watching